Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. Nice to see you again. And today we are here to discuss the conjunction of Mars and Saturn, which I see is till 4th May from 22nd March. So today is 18th when I'm making this video. And after three days, three, four days, uh, this is according to German time, 10.32 a.m. in the morning. It is going to enter on 22nd March. So, three days more in Sagittarius. And on 30, 31st, they will exactly be conjunct. And then Mars will be crossing Saturn. And 4th May, it will be entering the sign of Aquarius, <laughs> Kumbharasi. And it will be in Makara from March 22nd till 4th of May. This is a very intense transit. Every, every year or every twice a year, this transit is there. When Mars and Saturn come together always. So therefore, today we need to figure out what this transit will do for us. And um, because Mars is a faster moving planet than Saturn, so therefore, you will realize that uh, the houses which Mars rules will get affected more rather than the houses which Saturn rules in your chart, depending on your ascendant. Therefore, it's crucial that we make a note of the houses which Mars rules and we have to try to combine it with the dashas. Okay. So what do I mean when I say dashas? So I mean to say that the Vimshotri dasha is very important. So in Vimshotri, there are three things. Mahadasha, Antar, Dasha, Pratyantar. Pratyantar I don't consider much. But if you are running the Mahadasha of Mars or Saturn and or the Antar Dasha of Mars or Saturn, then this transit is going to be very crucial for you. right? And uh, in, in Jaimini, in Jaimini astrology, there are Chara Dashas. It's a different sign-based Dasha system. So in Germany, if you are running the dasha, the sign, the sign of where your Mars is placed in your birth chart. Okay, should I repeat? Wherever your Mars is, suppose your Mars in your birth chart, not in this transit, okay, not Capricorn, in your birth chart, if your Mars is in a Virgo, for example, then if you are running Virgo, Chara Mahadasha or Chara Antar Dasha, there is... I have not seen Chara Pratyantar. So there are two levels. Okay, In Vimshotri, there are three levels. In Chara Dasha, there are two levels. Or the sign where Saturn is sitting. So suppose your Mars is in Virgo and Saturn is in Libra, for example. So therefore, if you are running Libra Mahadasha or Virgo Mahadasha, or if you are running Leo Mahadasha and uh, Virgo Antar Dasha, okay, then this will affect, okay or even for Libra Antar Dasha, it will affect. And this, this effect will be more for those who, who have an afflicted Mars or afflicted Saturn. Okay. Now, the funny thing is Mars and Saturn are both malefics. Uh, they are dreaded malefics and they afflict others, but they also get afflicted. So whenever Mars and Saturn are conjunct or they are mutually aspecting each other or Mars aspects with the 4th and Saturn aspects with the 10th. Then also they are mutually aspecting each other. Then also they are afflicting each other. Remember that. Why these two are malefics? Because pessimism is also not good and uh, impulsiveness, that is also not good. So uh, it's like saying uh, when, when, when you are pessimistic and then suddenly you become very impulsive and when you are very impulsive, suddenly you become very pessimistic. So that, that gap which is there, that difference, that can take a toll on your consciousness sometimes. Okay? That is why these two, although they represent opposites, are malefics. Because they, they uh, take you away from your ideal behavior, as Lord Krishna says in the Gita, that uh, uh, when, when, we under, when we are calm, when we are peaceful, then only we can practice spiritual life. I mean, we can start spiritual life without without being in peace. That's fine. But Brahma Bhuta Prasanna Atma Na Sochati Na Kangshati. Okay. So if if we are always hyper or we are always pessimistic, then it's difficult to 
practice spirituality for a continuous uh, amount of time, for a long time. Okay, so to begin spiritual life, it's fine. But in the long run, we have to come to that uh, state where we are in equilibrium. Now, what does this transit do? So this transit is happening in the sign of Capricorn. You have to understand that. So if your ascendant is in a movable sign like Aries, uh, Cancer, Libra or Capricorn, then you are going to enjoy uh, or I would say feel. <laughs> then you are going to feel these effects more. Okay, Even if your dashas are not uh, of Mars, Saturn or in Charadasha, even if it is not. Why, why do I say that? Because for these four ascendants, these two will be in the Kendra. Okay. So whenever a planet is in Kendra, transiting in Kendra, and if it is in a great dignity or if it is in a very bad dignity, then the effects are more. Therefore, if you are either of these four, then you could feel the effects of this transit even more. And because Saturn is in own sign, so he's very strong there. But then Mars is exalted in Capricorn because Makara is the Ucharashi for Mangal. And therefore, Mars has the say. So he decides who does what. <laughs> so you could feel that the houses which uh, Mars rules in your horoscope, depending on your ascendant, okay. So, for example, if you are a Leo Lagna, then Mars is the Yoke Karak, okay, because he is ruling the uh, one Kendra and one Trikon, okay. So, then uh, whichever ascendant you are, then you will see the houses which Mars rules in your chart, you will want to fast forward them. But the houses which Saturn rules in your chart, they will try to obstruct Mars, which means imagine. You want to go somewhere and you have decided okay i will go for some career purpose and then suddenly your your partner or your son your daughter or your mother or father somebody falls sick and you are not able to go so then what happens you want to do something but then there is an opposition from somewhere right and because of that now, see, when life was normal, it was fine. You did not want to go anywhere and nobody fell sick. But now it's like two things coming together. Yes, that could happen. So therefore, during this transit, you will feel that the houses which Mars rules in your chart are facing opposition from the houses which Saturn rules in your chart. Okay. And to what extent will you feel this? Well, it will depend you know, on your entire horoscope because uh, not only the dashas, you know, the horoscope also. Because why do I say this? Because if you have an afflicted moon or a bad Jupiter, either of the two, or a weak ascendant lord, you you might be overwhelmed by this, which means you might not be able to take the energy of this in a right way. But if your ascendant lord is very strong, if your Jupiter is strong, if your sun, if your moon is strong, or even if your sun is strong, or even if your ascendant is strong, or the yoke karaka is helping the ascendant or the ascendant lord, or moon or Jupiter, either way, uh, so many conditions. <laughs> then what will happen is you will be able to use this energy in the in a good way. So what does this mean? You will be able to use this energy in a good way. It means that you will be able to weigh the pros and cons for both the areas. And primarily, because Aquarius is the mul tricone sign for Saturn and uh, for Mars it is Aries. So you want to check where Aries and Aquarius is in your horoscope, which, which houses they fall in. So therefore, uh, during this transit you could realize that so now see, the thing is, Mars is exalted. He is more powerful than Saturn. So you will, you will feel that the houses which Mars rules in your chart, they are more important than the houses which Saturn rules in your chart. So wherever Aries is, you will feel that is more important than wherever Aquarius is in your chart. Because he is exalted there. So exalted means 
the awareness is very high he is in a uchcha sthiti sthiti means he is very dignified so he you, you will feel that how can i let go of this how can i not do this how can i leave this no no i must do it okay so therefore now when mars comes to capricorn mars is not that impulsive planet okay because in capricorn he is very disciplined but the thing is here he he is disciplined and uh, saturn is also there but somehow these two are natural rivals so therefore uh, you have to understand that there, there there is a deeper understanding which you must have when it comes to the houses which uh, mars rules why do i say this because now here the lord of capricorn is sitting with mars so therefore it is not necessary that saturn is opposing mars but because somehow their energies are like that you will feel as if saturn is opposing mars you will feel that but if you elevate your consciousness uh, by doing spiritual practices you know like if you uh, do mantras if you do meditation in the morning if you do surya namaskar and if you uh, read books like the bhagavad gita then like for example if you read this bhagavad gita then you will see that you get a better understanding of how things are and what is going on in this world so then you will know actually mars and saturn are actually helping each other during this transit okay so many times you could see that uh, people will tell you uh, that uh, actually there will be fights there will be dissension there will be war and all this but because both are in good dignity you will see they, that they are actually helping each other but it is not the way you think okay it doesn't mean that uh, everything will be very easy so when i say they will help each other i mean to say that mars will want to do something and then saturn will say hey no you should not do that think twice all right so for example uh, i have taken out a random shloka from the bhagavad gita so this is the 10th chapter 11th shloka okay so i don't know if you can see what's written here <laughs> to show them special mercy i dwelling in their hearts destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance डार्कनेस बॉर्न ऑफ इग्नोरेंस एंड वाई डू आई टेक दिस श्लोका बिकॉज दीज टू आर तमसिक प्लैनेट they signify ignorance so during these times you must read the bhagavad gita all right and then we go to the 12th and the 13th verses the, these two are one of my favorite verses arjuna vacha look what arjuna is telling param brahma param dhama pavitram paramam bhavan purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam ajam vibhum आहुस्वाम ऋषय सर्वे देवर्षि नारदस्तथा असी तो देव लोव्यासो स्वयं चवीशि मे अर्जुन सैड यू आर दि सुप्रीम पर्सनलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड दि अल्टिमेट अबोर्ड परम ब्रह्म परम धाम धाम मीन्स अबोर्ड दि अल्टिमेट अबोर्ड परम धाम दि प्योरेस्ट पवित्र परम भवान the original person paramam bhavan that means original person the unborn the greatest all great sages such as narada ahustvam rishaya sarve means all the rishis have also confirmed devarishi naradas tatha which means devarishi narak asito devalo vyasa so these are rishis who are these rishis narad muni asita devala vyas vyasdev confirm this truth about you and now you yourself are declaring this to me swayam chaiva bravishi me that means now you have also declared this to me all right so this is a very 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 important verse and these these verses are actually very crucial because why do i take these verses because this is almost uh, you can check this is somewhere in between okay it's the mid of the gita so here arjuna is actually He he is actually coming out of the ignorance. 
बिकॉज नाउ ही हेज अंडरस्टूड वॉट कृष्णा है कृष्णा टोल्ड हिम ओके एंड नाउ ही विल take up his gandhi to fight against the kauravas and kill all the kauravas in headed by duryodhana shakuni karna dushasan and bhishma and drona also all right so therefore it's very crucial that we read the bhagavad gita and because this tamasic energy is so high and you are also seeing this corona virus thing is there so therefore it's very 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 crucial that we read Uh, scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita, or you can also read the Shrimad Bhagavatam, because these scriptures will give you enlightenment, at least at an intellectual level, not at a level of consciousness in the beginning, of course. But intellectually, you will be able to see. So, what I generally do is when uh, I read the Bhagavad Gita, I just don't read it, you know. So, I read it and then I pause and I think, oh, what what, what is being said here, you know? as krishna said you know by using that uh, sh- that shining lamp of knowledge i dispel all the ignorance which is there in somebody's heart so so arjuna was confused in the beginning of the war and then at the end what does he say he says kalishya vachanam tava he says nasto moha smritir labdhva tvatva sadan maya chuta sthitosmi kata sandeha kalishya vachanam tava he says nashto moha smritil labdhva all all my uh, everything has all the darkness has gone nashto moha all my attachments have gone smritil labdhva tvat prasadan maya chuta when i have got your prasad what is that what is that prasad which he has got prasad is something which god has given you so when we offer bhoga to god in the form of food and then uh, god accepts it and then we take it in return so generally that is prasad but here the entire bhagavad gita is like prasad so therefore krishna uh, arjuna is telling that tvat prasadan maya achuta achuta means it's referring to krishna himself sthitosmi gata sandeha all the sandeha means doubts everything has been dispelled dispelled karishya vachanam tava which means i will do what you have said and you have told me that for upliftment of dharma i must fight so therefore now i will fight there you go capricorn is the sign of battle fights it's not battle exactly that sagittarius but capricorn is the field it's the uh, field where activities take place that is why it is the 10th house 10th sign originally all right so uh, now bhagavad gita is uh, very critical in this case because in that case arjuna Uh, was also doing his duty and he was also fighting all right so it was like a combination of sagittarius and uh, capricorn to some extent but then at the end he suc- he succeeded and he including all of his brothers headed by the great dharmraj yudhishthir and bhim and his younger brothers step brothers or more than his brothers nakul and sahdev who were sons of madri and kunti Uh, sorry madri and pandu and he and bhim and yudhishthir were sons of uh, kunti and uh, pandu of course so the they were coronated by lord krishna as the emperor of the entire world or the entire universe <laughs> and then started the glorious reign of yudhishthir maharaj which was which was uh, as good as satyayoga because he was the perfect emblem of dharma and religious principles and there was it was literally perfect in fact it is said that uh, indraprastha when yudhishthir maharaj was ruling indraprastha no, before the war before they were cheated in the gambling match by shakuni uh, it is said that indraprastha was more beautiful it was more powerful than indra city where indra is the king of the heavens where he resides you know amravati alakapuri these are different cities in the heavenly realms you know it was more opulent even about ayodhya it is said when lord ram was ruling uh, ayodhya when he was coronated as the king after coming from exile 14 years it was more opulent than indra's city also right thousands and millions and billions and trillions of times it was more opulent it was more beautiful it was like you can't imagine 
so therefore if we also want to get rid of these confusions then we must read scriptures like the bhagavad gita just seeing astrology videos and looking into your horoscope the same old horoscope 1000 times sorry to say this this pinches you and you will hate me for saying this but looking at your horoscope each and every time and looking at transit videos and dasha videos is not going to give you the answer it will come and helplessly it will it will just overpower you because these are very uh, strong energies so if you if you actually want to know what you should do then you don't have to watch any astrology video actually you you need to read scriptures like the bhagavad gita okay only then when you read so here you see what what's there krishna is explaining to arjuna okay he is explaining so you also need somebody to explain it to you okay otherwise you may feel that by may 4th or oh, i i don't know what's going on something just came happened and i just got carried away uh, and especially 30th and 31st march these are very intense days so do more meditation do more uh, reading of bhagavad gita and by that uh, you will realize that you have been successful during this transit okay so always remember during this transit mars and saturn are helping each other they are not opposing each other all right so you may feel that they are apparently opposing each other but they are actually not all right thank you very much and if you are uh, new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation regarding your horoscope regarding this transit then you can always go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him